So if we do accept that Christianity evolves over time, what part might science have in this process? Borrowing from Douglas Adams, I want to propose that fundamentally the role of science is to understand life, the universe and everything. Being a bit picky, I don't see the application of that understanding as part of science. I'd call that technology, but this point isn't really particularly relevant to the rest of the lecture. Mirroring this, I'd see the role of theology in this context as making sense of that understanding. What difference does this understanding make to who I am and the way I live my life now? To explore this, let's think about this photo. It was taken by one of my twin daughters of her sister and a friend on Windgather Rocks near us one evening when they were camping up there. Science can tell us that the sky is that colour because there's preferential diffraction of light of different frequencies by the particles of dust and water in the atmosphere. What it can't tell us is why that sight leads us to an irrepressible joy, something in the heart that leads two teenage women to leap in the air in celebration. We really need religion to make sense of this. Here's another example. This is a baby in a Syrian refugee camp. Science can tell us that this child is suffering from malnutrition and that is a consequence of a shortage of a particular nutrients in his diet. Science can give a prognosis of whether the child is likely to live or to die. And technology, as defined earlier, can help us influence this outcome. But science cannot give us any idea of the value of that child's life or just how much he is treasured by his parents. We need religion to make sense of the world. So how do theologians make sense of life, the universe and everything? Until 500 years ago, the church viewed the world mainly based on its traditions, the things that had been handed down from one generation to the next. Then, in the early 16th century, Martin Luther suggested that those traditions should be compared with what was written in the scriptures. About 80 years later, an English theologian called Richard Hooker added what he called reason to this list. These three sources, tradition, scripture and reason, are sometimes referred to as the three-legged stool of Anglicanism and are regarded as the foundation of Anglican theology to the present day. I'm not particularly happy with considering these as three legs, though, because they seem quite different in nature to me. To me, scripture and tradition feel like sources of knowledge, whereas reason is the capacity to think about these and put them together and make sense of them. I would thus prefer to see reason as a mechanism for interpreting what we find in scripture and tradition. The next contribution was that of John Wesley who considered our experience as being important as well. Taking on this in board, we have reason as a mechanism for making sense of what we found in scripture and tradition and through experience. This is essentially what Methodism believes today. And if you go to the Methodist Church website, you'll see it described as the Methodist quadrilateral. That was all very well in Wesley's time, however, but history doesn't stop with his death and things have changed quite considerably since. One of the biggest changes has been the rise of science, which isn't referred to at all in Wesley's Quadrilateral. We can't blame him for ignoring this. Science as we know it today was only just beginning to emerge in his time. He can have had no inkling that one day science would have a credible explanation for how the universe came into being, or would have explained almost all diseases in terms of biochemical changes within different cells of the body. So how does science fit into this picture? For most of the last 200 years, theology has been spectacularly unimaginative and science has largely been considered as a separate way of viewing the world. When science and theology have interacted, they've tended to argue and fight. If we're honest, religion has been much bruised by these encounters, to the point that many people see religion as having been largely discredited by science. But maybe if we calm down, we can handle things more creatively. So let's reflect for a moment. Is there another way of looking at these ideas? I think there is, and the more perceptive of you will have spotted a clue in this diagram in the way I've laid out the three centres of scripture, tradition, experience, with space for more 
Theologians shouldn't see science as an enemy in their quest to make sense of the world. They should be seeing it as a friend. What would happen if we modified this diagram so that theologians use their knowledge that they have been granted through science rather than simply ignoring it? Rather than seeing scripture, tradition, and experience as the only three sources of knowledge, we should add science as a fourth. It's my belief that this is a much more sensible approach to ensuring that we continue to develop theology to ensure that it continues to be relevant to the modern world. If you've got used to the way I use these diagrams, some of you might be thinking about what the final space is for. Well, going back to what I said earlier, I think our society needs to include an understanding of contemporary culture. Within this, I would include all our contemporary ideas that don't come from an evidence base. And the reason for that is because I'd call that science. So, for example, modern ideas about human rights, including ideas about slavery that I talked about earlier, are not part of Christian tradition, scripture, experience or science, but have still had a profound influence on modern Christianity, and particularly on how it expresses its support for the disadvantaged of the world. I'd see this as a cultural influence. So how does the framework affect what we've already been talking about? Well, let's go back to that multidimensional spectrum of theological ideas. If we expect that science and culture should be admitted into the basis for theological consideration, then we can use these to help select which of the broad spectrum of theological ideas should be used as a basis for future evolution of the church. Science provides strong arguments against biblical literalism or young earth creationism, for example, and may be much more supportive of some of the other beliefs that are outlined in this diagram. What we need to do is apply our science and our understanding of culture to try and help us work out which of these are the most relevant for the modern world, alongside, of course, that uh, information from scripture, from tradition and experience.